right, all right. How's everybody doing today? All right, today what I want to show y'all is something pretty interesting. I'm not going to poke a hole in my still air box because I've already got a nice still air box and I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to poke an extra hole that I have to deal with later just for the sake of showing y'all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you poke the hole in it on something else but just know that you want to have your still air box remember you're going to have it upside down because this is your floor mat and then you set your box down over it so you want your holes to be perfect where your arms go through you don't want it to be you don't want your arms to be super tight in the hole where it creates compression but you don't want it to be super loose either to where there's a bunch of airflow you want the holes to be nice size where you can set your arms in there and then don't be sliding your arm in and out just working like this as much as you can. That's why I say a big box is better because if you've got a little one, you're in there doing this. And if you feel the airflow when you push your arms and pull it out, that's what creates new air in there. That's what creates contam. If you just have your arms in there and you're doing like this, there's not a lot of airflow. Okay, so you decide where you want your two holes and you take a black magic marker and you tip it. You put the black magic marker right there, right there. Then you get you a torch, you light it, and you get you a can that is the size for your holes. Now, if you notice, this is a lot smaller than them. I'm gonna show you why in a second, but what I'm doing right now is just showing you how to do the hole one time. All right, it's easiest to me if you take the flame and put half of it right there and then run the ha other half into this side right here. See how it's heating up both sides at once? You do that for just a second, then turn it and do that for just a second. Now it's heated up all four sides of the can, right? All right, so now we got it good and hot. You can set that down and you take it and you just twist just lightly you ain't got to twist hard and pow you have a perfect hole that don't have no jagged edges none of that all right now we know how to do the holes show you why i use this small one because you use the same routine to make your fruiting chamber right now i also believe in the unmodified fruiting chamber why do you say is this one modified then trip because i live in mississippi and if i do the routine where you just flip the lid over and leave it cracked if i do that in mississippi my whole box is going to fill with gnats no matter what it don't matter how clean i keep it anything like that one gnat's going to get in there it's going to lay eggs in the soil and it's going to reproduce and before you know it you're going to have so many gnats it's ridiculous so i have discovered a technique with my one of my favorite mushroom growing tools and that's painter's tape why painter's tape well because it's not that sticky it comes off good so what you do it don't on any box this always works you put three holes on the long side two holes on the short side three holes on the long side two on the short side you just space them out a little better if it's a big box like that you know all right so now you've got your 10 holes on the box, right? That should look, I threw the thing away, but they should look like this. All right, on the inside, on the inside, you're gonna put uh, four strips of micro pour tape, right? So you put the four strips of micro pour tape on there, and then you put your garbage bag liner in there and then you, uh, no, no, before that, sorry. You put your micro pour tape on the inside and then you put your painter's tape on the outside like this, right? All right, so now you have a box that's completely airtight. So you put your liner in there, you put your substrate in there, you put your grain in there, you mix it up, you get it right. Then you put the top on it and then you take that painter's tape and you go around the edge and you seal it tight where nothing can get in. Well then, you take one strip on this side, right here, just like that, it's perfect. One strip right there. And then you take one strip on this side. 
Now that you got one strip on each side tore off, that's how your box is going to breathe. So don't worry about letting air in up here. That's plenty for it to breathe during the colonization process. Now, as soon as you get ready to fruit it, you do the same thing, except you take all of these tapes off, all the blue, every bit of the blue, and it ain't going to tear. They're going to be perfect, just like that. You're going to have perfect filters then all the way around you just take them off bam it's that easy it is that easy now if you live somewhere that's cold and the bugs ain't that bad hey trust me i recommend the unmodified tub tech i recommend not poking one hole in it and just cracking the lid and doing your thing you don't a lot of people say you have to fan and all that i've never fanned once never had to fan once don't believe in fanning. I mean, it just, I've never found it necessary. I can grow full canopies without fanning or any of that. It's all about genetics and preparation. So anyway, that's your two reasons to either do modified or unmodified. I absolutely, in spring, summer, and fall, I absolutely have to do modified tech. Now, once the winter rolls around, I can get lucky and I can get, you know, six months of uh, unmodified in because all the bugs are dead. But if there's bugs around, they're gonna get in your box if you don't try this way. Now, there's a lot of times where people, you've obviously seen people that'll stuff uh, cotton in the holes. There's a whole bunch of other ways, but this way is cheap and it works good. Trust me, try it. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. All right, once again, much love, everybody. I appreciate you.